Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back to another Dizzy Dyer's B-Boy vlog. Today I'm gonna be doing a totally different style of vlogging because you know, ever since I've been here at the postnatal care center after having my baby, you know, I, I wasn't able to do much because I've just been chilling in this hotel, just totally lounging out. And uh, I've just been, you know, doing something I normally don't do, which is just go on Facebook, look at all the posts, and I've been seeing all the beef that's been going on, and so I figured, hey, why not try something new for my next vlog, you know? So for this one, instead of being a vlog, it's more like a, kind of like a newscast, a b-boy beef newscast kind of thing. So yeah, I'm just, might as well just try something different, you know what I'm saying? Check it out. So this just in, B-Boy Remind, the legendary B-Boy Remind has called out publicly, online, basically all the breaking giant competitions and events like that, and uh, sponsors I guess. And uh, yeah, some people are jumping on the bandwagon saying yes they agree with him, and you know other people from the other side who are part of that, I don't know what to call this, this big group of professional event organizers and I'm gonna call them for now the B Illuminati, okay? <laughs> because it's just a little inside joke. It's not that they're really the Illuminati and it's not really that there's really a conspiracy, but there's a group of people who are obviously at the top of breaking uh, and they're majority promoters and they kind of call the shots and they run how breaking goes. It's kind of obvious because we all know, well, if you're, well, if you're in the scene, you know who calls the shots and it's the people who have the biggest events. And you know, the people who have the biggest events, of course, have people who they choose and prefer to work with and they have an inner circle and uh, if you're part of the inner circle you get more jobs you get more gigs and stuff like that and you know to all the people looking at this closed circle they look at them like it's some kind of conspiracy like a b-boy illuminati or a breaking illuminati now i'm not saying i'm not confirming or denying the existence of an illuminati right of a b-boy breaking illuminati but uh yeah i'm just gonna call them the b illuminati just for the sake of it okay so Remind has called them out on a post on Facebook and it's gathering a lot of attention and if you don't know, feel free to go check the, all the stuff out. I am going to read it out for you uh, and yeah, go through what's going on. Here we go. Posted on Ariston Rapoila aka B-Boy Remind's page, he says, Monster Energy, Red Bull, and Silverback don't know shiz about our hip-hop culture. Why their logo is a Grim Reaper? Why Monster Logo 666? Satanic agenda? Don't be scared, homie. Why bitch boys jump on, on, on any team or crew just to win? Why you act like we need their money? Why you can't throw a jam yourself? Why drink that shiznit? Why them hoes got their clothes off at the jam while I'm trying to represent? Why old friends act fake? Why you doing our moves and act like they're yours? Why they don't let you pick the judges at your own jam if they don't, if they sponsor it? Why they take taxes out of prize money? Why you can't make some fresh gear? Why you got a bunch of mumble break dances? Why people is dance for so cheap? Why do they act like they doing you a favor? Why Air Flare? LOL, if you got offended, this was for you. So yeah, that's my uh, Cali voice impression, which I probably did very extremely horrible. Feels like it was a mixture of like some Southern Middle America, I don't know, gangster kind of, whatever. Anyway, so, that's what he posted online and it got a lot of attention and if you look over here, there's like uh, the Grim Reaper. If you look at this, he posted a picture, if you look at Silverback, I guess it kind of looks like the arm becomes a sickle and uh, the face kind of looks like the Grim Reaper or an ape. But anyways, I mean, I'm not sure, this could be far-fetching, but yeah, I know, it's, it's, it's crazy, it's weird. And anyways, People go down into the comments and you can see so a lot of people do agree and a lot of people do look at this conspiracy stuff like you know perhaps it really is a conspiracy now I don't know if it is and I really don't think that it's gonna be a real conspiracy but it might be because kind of does look like a Grim Reaper and there are some legitimate questions that he did ask you know for example like uh, you know of course it, there's, it's legitimate you know question to wonder why people are jumping on some major teams or crews just to win and it's because 
people don't value real crews that as much as they used to back in the days, which is sad. And I'm all for crews because that's what I really, really want. But the truth is, in these days, you know, real crews don't aren't gonna feed the bills. You know, at this point, you know, at this point, maybe in the future we can do something so that crews can together work together and make money together like a business but that's hard because you know b-boys and business do not go together very well and so he brings up a lot of th a lot of things though you know what i mean like uh now why them hoes got their clothes off of the jam while trying to represent i understand why this would be really frustrating for a lot of people because it's kind of weird you know there's these you know beautiful girls at an event you know half naked and uh you know some people are going to be like yeah this is awesome and other people are going to be like yo why are these girls here in the first place like you know there are plenty of other beautiful girls that are all at the jams like freestyle sessions and stuff like that that aren't paid to be there and whatever but man i'm on two sides if, you, if anyone knows me i'm on two sides of the fence because you know like part of me is an organizer and part of me is trying to like you know do business like i'm trying to figure out how that works and the other half of me is straight up b-boy till death you know what i mean like you know i still sharpen my skills i still want to battle i still want to earn, earn rep and so i'm kind of in the middle of both and that's the reason why it's kind of hard for me you know when you're in the middle of two things it's hard you know you, usually you got to pick a side but for me if anyone knows me i'm all about taking different perspectives you know what i mean hence the our system only problem is that if I've learned one thing is people don't want to see other perspectives and what i'm trying to do is shed some light on that so anyways there's so many things, if you don't know who Remind is, Remind is a legend, one of the legends from the gold school era. And uh, he's, you know, his, he has, he's, he's an epitome of what it means to be in the 90s, which is to be original, to have your own style, to have your own moves and flow and to be a game changer, you know, to be different from everybody else. And he was one of those guys that created so much moves and the way he breaked inspired the top b-boys throughout the 2000s. And uh, yeah, so he posted that and you know, and there's so many comments if you're looking over here, there's tons and tons of people posting, you know, like the house legend Brian Footwork Green and everything until we come down to the one part where the first, the past producer of Silverback Open named Cracker Zacks posted and he says, I'm going to catch a ton of flack here, but I simply don't care. What justifies you taking this stance when you are just as guilty as anyone else for taking on roles in their events? Is this simply a cry asking? What have you done for me lately? Remember, your own crew was affiliated with Monster well before Silverback and the PBT Style Elements Anniversary Crumbs was a Monster B-Boy. No disrespect, as I am genuinely curious of your rationale. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Remind, the legend as he is, responds, It's simple, you guys come and sit with us and try to act like you care about roots culture or get our idea, our moves, our art and try to attach yourself to it. And it's b-boys like yourself that act like you was doing us a favor. Laugh it loud. We worked with y'all to see where your heads and spirit was. And now we can see your agenda. We wanted to uplift the culture, but you guys think you know more than Style Elements crew. We put you guys on and gave y'all love on so many levels. And you talk about cake and eating it. I can eat cake when and where I want. For all we have done, just say thank you. But your guys' mental mentality on what cult culture is, is whack. And so, of course, Zax comes back and he says, your position was extremely negative towards Silverback, UDEF, the pro breaking tour, and Monster before your invite to the Silverback Open in 2016. Once you collaborated, everything was gravy and you had nothing but positive things to say about all organizations. A year and a half later, and your stance has dramatically changed. Unprovoked, might I add. If you can explain the correlation between said organizations and the scene being whack, well then, I am all ears, but I ask your evidence for, or for your claim. In my personal opinion, the scene has always had genuine and whack components, the sum of the whole. Number two, breaking culture has been uplifted immensely on a worldwide scale. It is now in the Youth Olympics. That is no small feat and has been driven heavily by UDEF, the pro breaking tour, and Silverback. Cross One is also a primary advisor on this project, and I highly doubt anyone would question his authenticity and commitment to the culture. While there are some downsides to such growth, they will work themselves out in time, hopefully with the help of the scene's biggest role models. Three, I never stated I knew more than you or SC Style Elements crew about hip hop and break life. Your crew was among my biggest inspirations when I started dancing in 99. I am forever in your debt as break culture got me through the worst times and carried me forward to bigger and better things, both inside and culture and out. For this, I will always have the highest regard for your crew, some of whom, whom have been become lasting friends. 
Four, I raise the questions because your post does not seem to be a complaint about the status of the culture, rather one geared in a direction of what have these organizations done for Remind lately. I could be mistaken, but that appears to be the nuanced message. I left Silverback UDEF in the pro breaking tour in early 2017, so I am a nobody worth losing sleep over. Now, if you want to check out more of this like stuff, like, you know, like, uh, go ahead and check it because the links are in the description below. And while we're at it, it doesn't end over there. It even goes even further because Nemesis, you know, from New York, if you don't know who Nemesis is, Nemesis is also one of the top hitters, top names in New York City from the gold school generation. So the same generation as me, we came up around the same time. And uh, he got on and he, if you don't know who he is, he is the official host of the Silverback Open, right? And so he got on it and you know, there's a bit of exchanging back uh, words back and forth. You know, uh, if you check this out, it says, Nemesis wrote on his page, all y'all riding reminds the, I'll see y'all at the next Silverback Open, you effing hypocrites. Now, things are getting crazy. A lot of things are, going, are unfolding and uh, this is what's going down the scene. So my question is to you is, what is your opinion on this, right? Like, is Remind's rationale right? You know, or is the, or is the B Illuminati really taking too much control and not paying tribute to the culture and the way that it's going? So I'm just, uh, so I'm just bringing you this information just to see what you guys think about things like this. Like, during the 90s, it was so hard to find breaking. There was no internet, there was no nothing. And so the real type of people that got back into breaking were seriously real b-boys. It was dangerous at that time. And the 90s b-boys, the gold school b-boys, are, li are literally the kind of, we're the kind of the generation that really brought breaking back. You know, we made, we brought the originality perspective. So it's easy for people in my generation to become bitter because, you know, uh, we were, we helped to bring back breaking when it was dead in the 80s. There was nobody breaking at that time. And what really brought breaking back was the whole return of breaking during the golden, the golden era of hip hop, during that generation of music where hip hop was at its finest. The music was killing it. The culture was at, the, at its greatest. And uh, we brought breaking back. We brought it back uh, through hip hop culture, you know, and uh, now, you know, uh, the power is in the hands of mainly the promoters and organizers who are calling the shots and they're choosing, you know, who they want to work with, which makes sense. But they're not living by the code of how we, used, how we would, you know, we think that it should work, right? From, as, from a cultural perspective, which is the people who, who've earned it should get to judge. That's why at R16, you never see us really bringing, when R16 was around, you know, we, even before I even joined R16, um, my old bosses were always bringing different people every year, right? They were always trying to get a new judge, a new type of face, someone who kind of earned it over the years. It was kind of like, okay, this person, he did a lot for the scene, he changed the game, he deserved to sit on the panel. And that's how we always did it, you know? And uh, when I joined, we always got a foundation b-boy who never, who, who deserved his chance to, to judge. We always got a, a 90s b-boy, an originality b-boy who changed the scene. We always got a power move b-boy, you know, someone who changed it for dynamics. So we've always got the different types of perspectives to judge. And so that's how, you know, us b-boys as a culture, we expect things to go. But from a business perspective, now because I'm a businessman as well, I understand the other perspective that you can only work with the people that you feel comfortable with. You know, it's just business, you know, does it work for your business or does it not? And so, you know, b-boys have kind of like a, you know, a bad reputation of, you know, kind of like missing flights, hard to work with, very demanding, and all that kind of stuff. And so we have this kind of push and pull between what is, you know, how, culture and business. We need business because without a business, you know, the culture is gonna starve. And where do we go? We go to Hollywood. We go to things that are businesses to make our money. We try to teach classes. We, you know, business is part of life. You know, it's either you're working for a business or you're making your own business, right? That's the only way things work in the, in the world. So, things are kind of tough. What are your thoughts and what do you think about the whole B situation? So, anyway, thanks for watching and yeah, till the next one, okay? Peace.